Hello everyone and welcome to another Remnant 2 guide video. In today's video we're going to go over the water harp puzzle and all of the loot that you can get from it and around it. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. When you come to the crystal next to the water harp, if you turn around, you'll see a book here on the table. And that book is gonna have a, a code in it or, or a set of glyphs that you'll need to follow in order to activate the harp. But unfortunately, you can't activate the harp yet. You must continue to, to traverse the world of Yisha until you come to a place where you can activate the water. And that is actually right above the crystal area. And you won't be able to get there until you follow all of those little um, exclamation points on your map until you come to an area that looks like this. You pull the lever and that activates the water. And then you are able to go back to the water harp and input this code in order to lift the bridge and take on the ravager so let's go over how we work those glyphs now that the water is flowing we can return back to the water harp and it's time to use that page from the book you can see on the top right side of your screen i've numbered which row the correlating peg in the symbol needs to be raised so the first row had that little drop it's nothing in the second row the third row has the two dots with the little drop and then the fourth row has nothing the fifth row is now being raised it's that kind of three drop pattern sixth row we're going to raise this one here and then the seventh row we are going to raise the first one and finally nothing in the eighth row i know that's hard i hope that made sense to everybody but the numbers in the red correlate to the row that you're activating and which symbol the lines mean nothing activate the peg underneath each one of those glyphs once you've done that you'll hear a little tune and the bridge will raise now you could go straight over and fight the ravager at this point but i wouldn't advise it because there are there is some loot that you can now grab before going over there that might make the fight just a little bit easier the first piece of loot i want to show you is down in the water so if you head back to the crystal and you come essentially the way you come to start out, go back out that door and go down this ladder and we're gonna head to the left and the right of this ladder and we're gonna grab some loot first we're gonna go to the left you can kind of see on the mini map once you go down the ladder this whole area of the map kind of opens up for you so once you get here drop into the water and head to the left there's gonna be some some bad guys in here but they're they're kind of squishy they weren't too bad so um, just clear those out the best you can and um, you can see it's like almost one hit almost kills them so um clear those out the best you can obviously in higher difficulties it, they'll they'll be a little bit more tanky but um and then once you clear them out you're going to move forward through this area kind of to the back and you can almost see those sets, sets of stairs there in front of us um and you can start to see the chest come into play here so there's chests on both the left and the right side and the ring can spawn on either side uh, this ring is really good for bleed builds it actually um, works towards melee bleed damage and stuff and such so it's really nice to have um not so, i don't know if so much for the boss fight but you can see charged melee attacks apply bleeding dealing 500 bleed damage over 20 seconds so that's kind of nice if we head back out the way we came and we go to the right of the ladder which we're going to go to the right here in short there we go if we're going to go to the right of the ladder we're going to get another chest over here um and again the, the ring could also be on this right side so make sure you check both um when you come down here it's important to know also that yeah, I would do this before going into the boss fight. You can see on my back, I did it after going to the boss fight. So I have the melee weapon you get from killing the Ravager in one of the four outcomes. So you can do it either way, whatever you'd prefer. The second piece of loot here I'm going to show you is the bolt driver um, sidearm. So I put made this graphic here on the left to kind of show you what the order is. I, I take no credit for finding this order. Apparently you can work it out via the flutist but i am not a whiz with music and notes and stuff like that um i've also been told there's a book i haven't found it so i take no credit for finding this sequence but this is the sequence for finding the bolt driver sidearm you can see the first row needs to be set to the first peg second row needs to be second set to the fourth peg third row has nothing fourth row is the second peg 
The fifth row, as I'm doing right now, is the fifth peg. There is nothing in the sixth row, as you can see. The seventh row is now the third peg, and then nothing in the eighth row. Once you get that done, pull the lever again, and behind you, just behind the harp as it plays its music, will open up a little, um, I don't know, I'll call it a chest or a cylinder that will pop out the bolt driver sidearm for you. This is a really cool weapon. It does not have a designated mod slot, um, so you can equip anything you'd like into it, really kind of gearing it towards what you like to play with and your play style. The final piece of loot I have for you is only after you get the bolt driver. Once you've done that, you want to head up these stairs to the flutist or the flautist, and he will be very happy that you have put in that song and that it's played. And after a little bit of dialogue, he will eventually give you a scroll that then you can take back to be crafted at uh, everyone's favorite crafting lady inside of Ward 13. So you can see. He is, very, as you can see with the dialogue on screen, he's very happy that you have played the, the Bolt Driver song. And he says, take this with the thanks of my people. And he's going to give you, after he's done, because he talks extremely slowly, the scroll of binding. And you can see it there on screen. Once you have that, head back to Ward 13. And bring it to everyone's favorite crafting lady. And you can craft this um, song of Ethan. I'm going to call it Efer. Pronunciations are not my best suit, so I apologize. But Song of Efer mod, and it says, Fires a shot infused with binding power of the Song of Efer, staggers most ground enemies within 10 meters, and deals 150 damage to flying enemies within the same range. So you can see, I'm going to build up my mod power here, and I'm going to fire it on the ground. You can see it kind of pulses out, and anything within that pulse will be slowed and also take damage. So super helpful, um, especially if you start on the Yisha. Um, planet as your starting planet get this very early and then you can have some good aoe effects but i hope this video helped you if it did please consider dropping a like and subscribing for more content i thank you for the support have a great night we'll talk to you later bye bye